Listen, top of the morning to you. Welcome on in. Welcome on in to the Leadership Podcast. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Dwayne Roberts, and I'm 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 gonna be uh, the host for the Leadership Podcast here to influence, inspire, and empower men to make the shift in their personal leadership by becoming the best version of themselves. Um, it's here we're gonna share some tools, some tips, and resources to help ignite awareness and authenticity to improve your personal uh, performance, right? So listen, as we get ready to get started, man, before we get started, let me, let me go, uh, let's, let's take a quick little break real quick. In 2014, I simply recall sitting on my back porch trying to figure life out. I felt stuck, I lacked direction. And I was asking myself the old age question, What's my purpose? What was I meant to do? And if there was purpose for me, could I really fulfill it? Maybe you're asking yourself those very questions today and you're looking for answers and you're looking for more fulfillment. I want to encourage you to get hold of what God has to say about you to you through his word. Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk. I want to encourage you to spend time with God, talk with God, pray, get clarity and understanding about what God has to say about you. Philippians 1.6 says this, He who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I want to invite you to step into your purpose men's Bible study taking place each and every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. All you have to do is click the link now and register and I'll see you at the Step Into Your Purpose men's Bible study. God bless. All right, let's go. Step into your purpose, man's Bible study taking place each and every Thursday night at 730 p.m. Man, I want to encourage you to come out, come rock with your boy um, and, and grow. Um, if if uh, your faith walk or your spiritual walk is important to you, um, you definitely want. I encourage you to come on out, get connected to some like minded men. Increasing your performance. Right. And the power of increasing in, increasing your your personal performance. Right. Uh, man, I, this this is real good. Right. This is real good. I've been studying this for a few days. Um, it's something that I literally, um, I believe in. Um, it's, it's application for me. <laughs> I'm just going to be real. It's application for me. But going back um, and, and um, getting more insight on it uh, really encouraged me. It really encouraged me. And I'm almost at this crossing. Like, where do I start with this? Right. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm just going to start by keeping it simple right that's what that's that's always a rule of thumb for me keep it simple stupid stop it don't have to be complicated it just ha we, we just have to do it right and so here it is here here's how i'm going to start this thing out uh, and that is um affirming our strengths while ignoring our weaknesses yeah um it's not the process to master who you are right we don't we can't get better by uh ignoring our weaknesses right and Carl Jung states this that growth toward wholeness is about acknowledging our talents our and strengths while facing hidden and underdeveloped parts about ourselves see people who practice self-mastery are acutely aware of their ignorance their incompetencies and uh, are highly self-confident type of people a recent study took place uh, where they did had uh, surveyed over 6,000 assessments of managers and executives, right? Um, to identify, help to identify blind spots in their personal life and compare the results to the financial stock performance. They found that the organizations with higher percentages of self-aware leaders 
had fewer blind spots and stronger financial performance. And those organizations with or, or uh, leaders with lower self-awareness uh, had more blind spots and lower financial performance. In essence, the research was able to correlate how self-awareness with financial performance uh, go together, meaning that self-aware leaders have strong, authentic foundations on which they build sustainable performance. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that, that that's good. That's real good. That that tickles me when I when I think about that. How many of us want you, you want to increase? You want more performance out of, of what you do. You want more performance out of your uh, in your finances. Maybe you want to increase performance in your relationships. Maybe you want per, uh, per, increased performance in how you lead. Ready? Those leaders who were self aware who understood their gifts, their talents, their strengths, their weaknesses. Yep, they were able to increase financial performance because they understood who they are. Not only did they understand who they are, but they understood what they took into the work environment. They understood what they took back into the community. They understood how to lead themselves well, therefore to perform at a better and higher standard, getting profitable or better results in life right and the the the, the leaders who lack self-awareness who did not understand their strengths who did who do not who not who do not have core values about who they desire to be mm -hmm. yeah they it's their, their financial performance lacked <laughs> you got to tell me i, I just want i'm just curious to know is that not good and so if we, if we can correlate the financial uh, performance to self-awareness, what other areas in our life will, are, we, are we not showing up? What other areas in our life are we not performing? And we're not performing or neither are we getting the results we desire. And some of you entrepreneurs, some of you business owners, or asking yourself, man, I'm, I'm not getting the result I want. Uh, and you're frustrated and you go take that. You might take that attitude at home. And now you're kicking the dog, screaming and cussing at everybody in the house. And everything is out of whack. <laughs> it's all out of whack. All because you wouldn't take the simple step to dial back and self-assess. Develop self-awareness. Identify your core strengths identified some limited or limitations or blind spots. And I, and I, li I like this word blind spots because these are the things, not so much that we are unaware that we are limited at doing, but these are the things that we don't even see that we do that hinder us to get the performance or results that we want out of life. Think of the blind spots like driving uh, down the street in your car and you want to get over in the right hand lane. You might look in your side rear view mirror and you might see that little indicator indicating that there might be a car or something in your blind spot. Right. <laughs> and when you realize that you might do what I do, you might do that extra look just to double check to see what's in your, in your way. Yeah. Th these are the blind spots that they're talking about, things that we simply can't see that might be hindering our performance. Right. Listen, I'm going straight to the book this morning, man. Um, because this is this is just way too good for me to try try to uh, to paraphrase or or rehearse off off the top of my head. So I'm coming straight out of the book this morning, and I hope you appreciate it because man, I love it. Right? I'm passionate about what I do, and here it is. Right? Um, whatever your culture, whatever your values, whatever your guiding principles, you have to take the step. Yep, to inculcate them in your personal life. You might have to inculcate them in your organization, meaning that you may have to communicate them. You may have to teach them. Is this good? How, how many of us communicate our, our values? How many of us communicate our, our, our purpose in life? What is it that I want to achieve and why? 
What are my values? What makes what makes me intrinsically me? What's those things that that you know what? Um, they are my guiding principles. No matter what, I won't I won't uh, deviate from them. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't it's, it's easy. It just means that this is my guiding principle. And when I'm faced with it, when I know this is what I need to do, this is what I'm going to do. And sometimes, right, sometimes we take on, we, we think, think of kids. When kids when kids learn, kids learn because of multiple ways. They learn multiple ways. But one surefire way that most kids learn is by imitation, by mimicking, right? And some of us, and I know I'm, I was guilty of this for the longest time, that um, I would imitate everything that I saw. I would, I would be a carbon copy of something else that wasn't core to me, that, didn't, that, didn't, that wasn't a true value for me. And some of us in life and business, we adopt these values because they sound good because they look good on somebody else. And we say, oh, wow, wow I want to be that. But they aren't core to who you are. And because they aren't core, we, we show up as a, a carbon copy of ourselves. It's not who we truly, does. it's not who we truly are. We haven't, we haven't learned how to implement the value. And how do you know if you implement the value? If you got to second guess the value, then you don't implement the value. Just that simple. If you have to second guess the value, you don't implement the value. Because the things you value, you do. The things you value, you go after. The things that you value are important to you. There's no second guessing that. If your family is a value for you and, 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 the, and the crook run up in the house, you're going to get that crook. Why? Because the value is important to you. The value is important to you. You ain't second guessing it. <laughs> or is it me or my wife? No. Or is it me or my kids? No, we ain't doing that. At least not if your value is family. If your value is the, are the ones that you love. Right? I just want you to think about that. So here, here, let's keep it, let's keep it rolling. Right? So think about this from um, uh, just an organizational perspective. Right? Um, organizations have to, uh, have to teach their values, have to communicate their values, because it's going to align with how they hire, how they, how they, uh, how they strategize. Right? Just think about this. Here, here is another study that had took place where they interviewed uh, 30 founders, 30 CEOs, um, and they were studying purpose-driven companies, right? They looked, they talked to CEOs, they talked to founders, they talked to senior senior executives that had a clear, visible, authentic, a clear, visible, authentic purpose, engaged employees, and customer-oriented cultures, and strong financial results. And this is what they found. They found that companies focused on purpose and values reported a annual rate of, I mean, an annual growth rate of 9.85%. They rounded up. They, they, they had a growth rate of 10% annual growth rate compared to 2.4% of the entire S&P 500. Because I just want to talk to people. <laughs> that find purpose and values important. <laughs> I mean, this really tickles me, man. This really tickles me. You, you, you want more performance? You want better results? Get clear on the purpose. Get clear on the values. Here, the study concluded that the leaders needed to, study concluded that leaders need to back up their commitment to purpose with key pra practices. And I'm going to give you these key practices and I want you to write them down for yourself because we, uh, we're going to well, um, I'm highlighting them because I want I want to I want to pull out a point from them. Here it is. The key practices were um, they hired people who were connected to the purpose. Another key factor or practice that they did was uh, the leaders were transparent. Their actions were congruent or aligned with their purpose and. They offered land based contrib uh, employee contributions to to those that work for them. I need you to get this. Leaders need to back up their commitment to purpose with key practices. 
hire people who are connected to the purpose. Real quick, let me ask you a question. I got it. You may not have a job. I mean, you may not have you may not be an entrepreneur. You may not be a business owner. Uh, but you know what? My, my question for you is, who are you connecting with? Who are you growing community with? Who are you building relationship with that connect to the purpose in your heart? Who are the people who are moving in your in the direction in which you want to move, move in? Number two, it said that the key leaders were transparent in their leadership and in their actions aligned with their purpose. How are your actions aligned with your purpose? One of my key core uh, values for myself is that of transparency, leadership and taking action that align with your purpose. How are you moving? Are you in alignment? Are you in congruency with your purpose? Or are you just aimlessly going down the street? Are you just aimlessly waking up throughout the day? Are you just doing whatever you can do, whatever comes to mind? Or are you just sitting on the back of your porch trying to figure life out? Which one are you? Man. It said they offered a plan based that contributed contributed to the employees. Ready? They gave out bonuses in essence. That's how I sum it up. If you got a different point of view, go ahead, drop it in the chat. I'll take that too. But watch this. How are you serving people? How are you giving back to others? How are you being a blessing? Here are the companies. They... They, they identified the top companies that they, uh, they, they surveyed here. And I just want to call them out, shout them out to you. Um, and I don't, I don't know many of these companies. Maybe you do. Chabano, Tom's, Esty, Warby Parker, Kind Snacks, and West Am. Yeah. These were the organizations that increased their profit, their annual growth rates, by 10% because of their core values and leading by or with purpose. The CEOs here, here, what they say is um, their success was contributed to how the CEO led with purpose, how people were clearly the top priority, how they developed culture and encouraged community, allowing others to bring their best self to work, and they had enabling practices and sim, uh, systems that aligned with their purpose. Hold on. They were training and teaching. <laughs> I love this. I literally love this. Right. What can you take away for yourself right there? I want to share this, 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 this story here that really kind of sums it up and brings, brings it all together. Um, for me, and I hope it does the same for you. Uh, and this is that when an organization has a clear purpose, it unleashes it, the power. It, it unleashes the power and drive and focus of combined efforts that in line to a one directional shift. David Lub Lubzik, and maybe you know who he is, right? David Lubzik, the CEO and founder of Kind Snacks. Oh, man, he has a phenomenal story. His vision and strategy for creating an enterprise has been driven by a, compa a compelling value and purpose. He also uh, is inspired by his personal experience and his personal worldview. He's a son of a Holocaust survivor, and he shares a story where his dad was um, um, a prisoner. And one day, a prison guard had uh had snuck a potato in and gave it to his dad and his dad shared with him this story right and st said let me get right where it was well i'll sum it up it was that act of kindness for david's dad that made him realize that he can survive the hardship that he was going through and therefore that story had always stuck with David and it is the core reason behind the kind, uh, the kind uh, snacks. David embodies the kind brand and purpose. He employs over 600 people. His product sells in over 150 different stores. And in the last five years, he has generated 111 percent 
annual growth. Kind has sold over 1 million, I'm sorry, 1 billion kind bars. <laughs> Come on. If, if purpose and core values don't uh, um, increase performance, <laughs> expand growth, get you the results that you're looking for, man, I don't know what else does. I promise you, I don't know what else does. And so um, I want to I want to I want to help you tap into I want to help you tap into your, your core talents and uh, about yourself. Right. Your talents. What what's what's what are your most valuable gifts for serving other people? Now, we all have them. We all have skills. We all have talents. We all have gifts. And in some cases, we excel in them. In many cases, they come natural to us. In other cases, maybe like for me, I got to study a little harder. <laughs> I got I got to have to get me some. I need some experience underneath my belt. Maybe I don't know. I'm saying I, that's how I learn. I learn hands on. Right. And but for others, it just comes at, um It comes easy. Right. Talent are those things that make us and feeds and energizes others. Just as simple. Martin Silic Sil 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 Silgerman, he says this about core talents. And he calls them signature strengths. And I really like that term. It's a term that I've heard many times before is what, you know, we talk, we talk about strengths, but he says signature strengths. It's here. He says that uh, when we use our signature strengths in our work, we increase our opportunities for more happiness, turning our work life into life work. Come on, somebody. <laughs> How many of you are just getting up and just going to work versus doing your life's work? I got to admit, for the longest time, I was getting up and going to work. Today, guys, I am working. I'm, I'm doing life's work. I'm doing what I'm passionate about. I'm operating from a place of purpose. I, I'm, 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 I'm tapped into uh, the talents, my gifts, what makes me, what makes me great. What, what, what skills I bring to the, to the, to the, to the community. Um, I'm tapped in and understand what's my limitations, what's my blind spots. And because I know my purpose, I'm, 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 I'm core on my core values. I'm core on my core values. And so I want to give you six questions to ask yourself as we get ready to close this thing out. Six questions to ask yourself and answer them, answer them honestly, man. Um, because this was, I literally did this, right? And so here it is. Question number one. What gift can you, what gift can people count on? What gift can people count on me for? Here we go. <laughs> what gift do you bring to the table? What can people count on you to do? People can count on me to come speak. I promise you. Put a mic in my hand. <laughs> I'm coming to speak, right? Uh, number two. When I'm when I am making a difference and creating value, my ta my talents that show up are answer that question. When I'm making a difference, creating value, my talents that show up are the three other people consistent consistently tell me I make a difference by doing what? What are, what are people saying up to you? What are people sharing with you? Other people consistent, consistently tell me I make a difference. That down. Identify that for yourself. Number four, when I'm working with others and we are energized and engaged, I am contributing how? How are you contributing? When I'm working with others and we are energized and engaged, I am contributing how? Identify how you contribute. Number five. I am passionate about doing what? How do you, how, what are you passionate about contributing? I guess that's a better way to say it. And lastly, number six, summarize your core talents, your gifts that make you different. Get clear on them, write them out. 
Man, if this was good, man, in the chat, let me know what you think. I want to encourage you, never miss an opportunity to grow yourself, man. Connect with your boy every Saturday morning, 8.30 Mountain Standard Time for a Leadership Podcast. I want to say thank you for taking time out your busy day and connecting with me. Um, go ahead, share the feed, tag the page. Go back, watch the uh, replay. That's right. It's, uh, it, it's on YouTube. And lastly, realize this, that... Uh, you have everything you need to take your life to the next level.